Radiation oncology is a field of medicine where we use a high energy um, um, radiation beams to kill the tumor cells. There are many types of radiation uh, beams such as the electromagnetic radiation of photon beams, electron beams, uh, heavy ions such as protons, neutrons and um, also the other one that we are talking today is about brachytherapy. So what is brachytherapy? Brachytherapy uses the same radiation uh, that we use in the external beam radiation uh, such as the electromagnetic waves and the electrons. However, here in brachytherapy, we treat it in a very precise manner by placing the tubes into the tumour. So the brachytherapy can be a high dose rate brachytherapy, low dose rate or intermediate dose rate where we place the radioactive seeds into the tumour. The word brachy in Latin means short. So brachytherapy means short range therapy. That means in a very short range unlike the external radiation where we shoot from, um, uh, from a distance like 100 centimetres away. Here is we precisely place the uh, needles into the tumour and we sterilise it. So currently most centres around the world uses high dose rate brachytherapy uh, using the source uh, Iridium-192 which is a synthetic radioactive source. The aim is to deliver ultimate lethal dose to the tumour cell. What is ultimate lethal dose? That means we give a dose of radiation that nothing actually survives and this is how we sterilize the tumor. So because in brachytherapy we can be very precise and we can place the needles into the tumor, very high doses of radiation can be given to the small area while limiting toxicity to the surrounding structures. And also another advantage is, you know, when we have a breathing motion, like we are treating a tumour in the liver, the liver is moving up and down. Um, when we use brachytherapy, there's less issues with that because we place a needle or plastic tube into the tumour. When a patient is breathing, the liver is moving, um, the tube also will move with the with the breathing, unlike when we use external radiation, we may miss the target. However, it has a steep learning curve for the specialists uh, who are, and doctors who perform brachytherapy. Uh, it has a long, uh, steep learning curve and uh, it comes with experience that we can improve further. Today, I would like to touch on the type of brachytherapy treatment that is done at um, Pusat Perubatan USM Bertam. While these are not comprehensive, there are more brachytherapy procedures that can be performed. These are the one commonly that we perform in Bertam. So one of it is uh, high dose rate liver brachytherapy. High dose rate uh, brachytherapy, as uh, I mentioned earlier, is a form of minimally invasive radioablative uh, treatment directly targeting the tumour here in the liver. So we call it a liver directed therapy to sterilize or clear the tumors in the liver. Other options when we have a tumor that's in the liver include uh, surgery, surgical removal, which is the most common option and standard option. Radiofrequency ablation, which uses the heat, microwave ablation, ethanol injection, and selective intraarterial uh, radiotherapy and at times also transarterial chemoembolization. This brachytherapy to the liver can be used for both the hepatocellular carcinoma and metastatic tumors to the liver. What are the advantages of this liver directed brachytherapy? One is if you look at the heat based something like uh, the radio frequency or microwave ablation. Whenever the tumour is beside a big blood vessel, when we use heat, there is something called heat sink effect, whereby all the heat are dispersed by the blood that is flowing and then it becomes less effective. Also in radio frequency ablation, there is a limit on the size of the tumour and number of lesions. Because if the tumour is too big, uh, more than 3 to 4 cm, it's not very effective. And 
in some tumors like hepatocellular carcinomas, we realize that they are very radiosensitive. What radiosensitive means is uh, even at a lower dose of radiation, the tumors tend to disappear. And also we can target the very difficult anatomical uh, locations, you know, like subdiaphragmatic tumors, which is very difficult for radiofrequency ablation and uh, heat-based uh, treatment. We are the one of the four or five centers around the world who are actively doing this liver brachytherapy. The rest of the three centers are in uh, Germany and we are one and there is one center in uh, India that used to do liver brachytherapy but our numbers probably are second highest in the world. The next one will be high dose rate tongue brachytherapy. So, my colleague uh, Dr. Jasmine would have spoken about the tongue um, uh, brachytherapy. Just to touch a little bit, uh, we came up with a novel method which is called a hybrid uh, brachytherapy followed by intensity modulated radiation therapy. With this, we are giving patients an option, non-surgical option to actually treat um, tongue cancers. It is an organ preservation option whereby the tongue is preserved and from the data that we have, the quality of life has been quite good. Head and neck brachytherapy is um, uh, when we treat the same method like in tongue, but we treat uh, the head and neck region. So in the same concept how we treat the tongue the cancers, here we treat the lip, the buccal mucosa and the rest of the areas, sometimes including the skin. Um, also, usually it's reserved for patients who are unfit for surgery. The next one will be esophageal brachytherapy. Esophageal brachytherapy, uh, we can offer it as a symptomatic uh, in a palliative setting whereby patients who cannot swallow, we put in a tube and then we radiate the tumor, intraluminal. Or we can even um, produce, uh, do the brachytherapy in the form of radical treatment aiming for the cure. The advantage of esophageal brachytherapy compared to putting a stent in is that patients have better quality of life, less retrosternal pain, less, uh, uh, less uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease. And because we give a high dose of radiation to a small area, the chances of ensuring it's, uh, that we sterilize the tumor in the esophagus is much higher. Palliative brachytherapy is another form of uh, radiotherapy to uh, patients who have uh, you know, incurable disease and we want to palliate the symptom, that means we want to make them feel better. This palliative brachytherapy is hardly performed around the world, uh, more because of the in lack of uh, expertise and also uh, many of the radiation oncologists are not aware that this type of uh, therapy can be performed. The advantage of palliative brachytherapy is more usually in a setting whereby um, patient already had radiation before and the tumor did not respond well or it grew after the radiation. So when we do a palliative brachytherapy, we can give much higher doses compared to external radiation to ensure that the tumor is well controlled. Brachytherapy for endometrial recurrences. So these endometrial recurrences is uh, in women who had uh, uterine cancers or cervical cancers who already had the surgery to the uterus and sometimes at the vaginal vault or the remnant of the vagina, the tumor may actually come back. So this scenario when the tumor comes back at the vagina, this is an area of need where there is not much of options left. What is frequently done now is that they, we do an external radiation and at times we continue with chemotherapy and all. But here need to be remembered that um, you know by doing a very focused radiotherapy to the wall recurrences by putting the tubes in and um, uh, giving high dose especially in the setting of uh, patients already had radiotherapy before we can actually sterilize the tumor at the wall and it can be curative for a patient. We have a series of around eight patients that we have treated this uh, 
vaginal wall brachytherapy and all of them had complete uh, response of the tumour. The surgery in this scenario can be even a pelvic excentration and removal of bladder and all the functions can be disturbed. And wall brachytherapy um, is an option actually to uh, preserve the structures and with uh, much lesser toxicity hopefully uh, from what we have seen in our series. We are the only one actually offering it in the country right now and even in places like Singapore regional nobody is offering this. Breast brachytherapy is a form of brachytherapy now uh, being performed in many sites around the world. They are actively venturing into it. Uh, while there are some advantages, here in PPUSMB we are focusing more on breast brachytherapy for patients who refuse surgery, unlike in other parts of the world where they do it uh, for patients who had surgery and uh, to uh, give a focused radiation to the tumor bed. In this scenario, a patient who refuse surgery, while surgery is the first option, we can actually put the needles in and give high dose of radiation to the breast tumors. Prostate brachytherapy is another form of brachytherapy which has been uh, um, uh, traditionally used in many parts of the world. While the interest is going down because of the newer technology, but there is still some advantage of prostate brachytherapy, especially in the setting when patient already had a radiotherapy before and then they may have uh, isolated recurrence in the prostate, a small tumor or so what, then we can use a transrectal uh, ultrasound guidance and then with that we use a prostate template where we can look at the uh, tumors uh, well and then we insert the needle directly into the prostate. We also perform a gold seed markers here whereby we put gold seeds into the prostate as to help us with the targeting of radiotherapy. Uh, radiotherapy uh, method instead of surgery for prostate uh, cancer control currently is showing equivalent to the surgery but with a different toxicity profile and um, many patients are opting for this. So talking about this brachytherapy, because in PPUSMB we have spearheaded the uh, uh, brachytherapy and we became the leader, I would say it's a world leader in brachytherapy. We performed the most number of brachytherapy, um, most number in terms of different sites of brachy. If you look at Germany, mostly they do liver brachytherapy and they are focused on liver. There are some centers in Japan which focus on tongue brachytherapy. Australians, they do prostate brachytherapy. Gynae brachytherapy is more in uh, Thailand. Um, the cervical brachytherapy. But here in PPUSMB and USM, the good thing is that uh, we do a wide range of brachytherapy from um, head to toe. Uh, we have treated most sites from liver to lung, uh, prostate, uh, rectum, gynecological brachytherapy, head and neck brachytherapy, tongue brachytherapy, esophageal and many sites. But despite that, there is still a huge potential and area of research in this field. One important thing that uh, made us uh, possible that we can treat this wide range of tumours is the physics support. The medical physics at uh, University of Science Malaysia has been very good and very supportive and the team consists uh, headed by Dr. Zahri. Uh, we had a computerized uh, treatment planning system and with the treatment planning system uh, we managed to treat in many sites um, uh, of the body with the uh, computer algorithm unlike when we used to do a manual calculation 10 to 20 years ago. However, the computer planning and algorithm can further be improved and this is where we need uh, more of this uh, School of Mathematics or Computer Science to come in to look at how we can improve further on the um, uh, algorithm. It is also a minimally invasive procedure. Minimally invasive in sense uh, we are putting a small tubes. Currently we are using a six French plastic tubes. 
uh, probably we can go to even a four French. We need to uh, look at the material if we can use a very small um, uh, tube so that we can reduce any risk of uh, injury to the structures. And other parts that we are looking at is whether we can combine this brachytherapy with the immunotherapy or targeted therapy to improve the patient outcomes. And then we want to look at uh, you know some toxicities of this uh, brachytherapy like in the tongue area patients may have uh, injury to the gum or the mandible um, because the tumor is too big and how to deal with this osteoradionecrosis or the side effects of treatment we also want to look at rather than treating the side effects patients just say like tongue cancer if they can come earlier if they come come earlier we can treat them much earlier and less side effects so we need the public health to go out and um, dental public health and everyone to go out and uh, educate the patients come early for treatment we have an option you know we can even give you an option of tongue preservation and everything the tubes and all these uh, equipments uh, that we use the disposable sometimes can be quite expensive uh, so this is an area of research where can we produce it uh, in-house here and look at it how we want to uh, reduce the cost to the patients these are the type of things that we can think about uh, um, and more users of brachytherapy is yes, something that we can actually discuss in detail whether it can be applied to even a non-cancerous tumor so um, different sites was the benefit uh, uh, in or in tumors that uh, is not uh, where brachytherapy has not uh, uh, have a role so far so it is an interesting uh, field field of brachytherapy uh, and myself as a brachytherapist we are very happy to share this uh, knowledge and can we can see how we can work further on this thank you